They roll onto the throttle out of turn number four. Green flags waving in the air. Side by side for the race lead through corners one and two. Holly Porter works the top side to the race lead down the back straightaway and into corner number three. All sorts of action all the way through the field as we complete lap number one. Brian Anacoke and Rob Neely get up off the racetrack in one and two. Lucas Smith had some troubles in three and four, but he gathered it in nicely. Out in front, it's Holly Porter with a lead of about five car lengths over Jacob Dykstra. Matt Hill running in the third position, then Brandon Merle in fourth. Hannah Farrell rounding out the top five. Jacob Dykstra goes to the top shelf in corners one and two, gets a good run down the back straightaway. Coming after Holly Porter for the race lead. Top two drivers pulling away from the rest of the field. Dykstra picked up the win last Saturday night at Merrittville Speedway, trying to make it two in a row, and now races off of corner number two to the race lead just after taking the halfway. I just watched a sprint car bump draft on the front straightaway. DJ Christie push Paul Klager. Klager is headed pit side, and we are side by side for the race lead. Dykstra now clearing Holly Porter again off of corner number two, as getting great runs down in corners one and two. Porter a little bit better on the bottom in three and four. Doesn't matter this time though, as Dykstra clicks off lap number 12. Two to go for Dykstra. Two to go as the racing is intense all around the speedway. We've got a mad gaggle of cars down in three and four. Jacob Dykes were getting a good run off of turn number two, and he'll extend that lead over Holly Porter. Here comes Dykstra off of corner number four to the white flag, trying to make it two in a row. A little stutter step to the outside there off of corner number four. He takes it back to the top side and turns one and two and down the back straightaway. Final time through corners three and four. He goes to the bottom this time. It's not going to matter. Checkered flag waves make it two in a row for Jacob Dykstra. Holly Porter second, Sean Evans third. Hannah Farrell will finish fourth. This spot goes to Aaron Turkey. Lucas Smith, Matt Hill, Jesse Costa, Derek Lemaire, and Liam Martin round out the top 10. Trouble wow. on the front stretch. Wow, Brad Heron, this is your lucky night. When you clip a car that hard, come to a slide at the end of the front straightaway, miss the concrete wall, that could have been something. And we are set to go green. Kyle McKenzie waves the greens at a turn number four. Ryan Dinning driving a different car than we're used to seeing them as they go three wide, four wide through turn number two and down the back straightaway. Big run by Billy Bleach in the 108. I'm not even sure if I can tell who the top five are right now. Adam as about 10 cars are battling for position. All three wide there through the opening couple of corners, but it is the number 88 of Ryan Denning, who led there initially, it goes backwards though, and Bill Bleed Sr. leads down the back straightaway, and Christopher Hale had a great heat race run up to second. Man, oh man, Ryan Beagle and Ryan Denning side by side through three and four making contact. Denning is going backwards in a hurry as Ryan Beagle gets on the back of Mark Bazine on the front straightaway, and we've got a battle for the lead. They were legitimately five wide off of corner number four, and again through turn number two, off the track there, the number 11, I believe that is GoFast. People heading to the pit area as Bill Bleach Jr. continues to lead here on lap number three as Ken Sargent and Christopher Hale go side by side for second. Good run going for those drivers. They run single foul. Now Christopher Hale within striking distance. Half a car length as they raced into corner number one. Now he's got the inside of Bill Bleach. Tried to slide up in front of him. That'll cost him a little bit of momentum, but he stays within a bumper length here into turn number three. Adam, they go wheel to wheel again. Hale trying to find a slide job, and now Caution Flying is going to wave as Brett Rodwell turned around on the front straightaway, and so is Pat Lajanaz. Here comes Ryan Beagle to apply the pressure for the second spot. Beagle got a good restart. Bleach didn't, and now the 84 machine Takes the nose to the inside of the 108 with three laps to go. Christopher Hale, meanwhile, trying to get his first career feature win in the number 79 machine. He's got a five car length advantage over Bleach down the back chute. Bleach is not gonna quit, that's for sure. In the 108, trying to fire back, but Ryan Beagle getting up beside him. That's gonna affect his momentum as we've got two laps to go. Yeah, twin sticks from starter Kyle McKenzie here as they rumble through corners one and two again. Hale doing a good job to hit his marks the same line through both ends of the racetrack here the last couple of times around the speedway in the number 79 machine. Three cars battling for fourth. Dave Bailey, Ken Sargent, and Trevor DeBoer's the white flag wave. Yeah, Dave Bailey and Kenny Sargent getting real physical out there on the racetrack. One more lap around for Christopher Hale. 
trying to pick up his first checkered flag as they duke it out side by side for second. Hale comfortably has an advantage through the final two corners. Beagle slides up in front of Bleach for the second spot. Double checkers in the air. Christopher Hale goes to victory lane for the first time. Ryan Beagle steals second from Bill Bleach Jr. Dave Bailey fourth. And Ken Sargent, your top five. Wow, what a finish. And the late model opens the only appearance for late model racing on Ashwikin Speedway in 2018, and it is underway. No stranger to this racetrack is Rob Pitts, and he is not shy on the start. They're four wide off of corner number two for the race lead. Greg Haskell through the middle. He'll take the point through corners three and four. The RH21 will lead lap number one. These cars are absolute beasts. You see them jump on the gas. The cars lurch every which way, clean and green in the early going in this late model feature with Rob Pitts digging hard, trying to take over that tech second position. Chris Ross in the 18R has been the class of the field so far tonight, running in the second spot, but Pitsy coming after him in that 69 machine, the crate motor car on the bottom side of the speedway, and Chris Ross in that super late model up on the top has that car wound up, and these cars seem to be liking that outside lane with the big motor. We'll see two laps to go this time by, as Kyle McKenzie gives him the rabbit ears off the starter stand. Rob Pitts changes his lineup, heads towards the outside. Now we'll go back to the bottom of the racetrack to go under Jay Liverance. White flag will be displayed this time at a turn number four for Haskell. Pitts back to the bottom in corners three and four. Appeared to gain some ground that time as the white flag waves for Greg Haskell, the RH21, trying to pick up a late model open win here as he races off of corner number four in this 21 machine. Rob Pitts is closing in. One more opportunity and the yellow flag flies. The 19 machine of Don Douglas around, and caution coming out, and oh my. Rob Pitts, that he closed so much ground. And we are back underway. Wow, a great drive for Rob Pitts out of turn number four. He draws up even with Hassel going into one. Right to the bottom side off of corner number two. He's ahead by just a little bit, but Haskell powering around him down the back straightaway. Final time through corners three and four. Rob Pitts, can he move a slide job up to the outside? Rob Pitts going to take the win. Hand in the air. He loops it down into turn one. Oh, don't destroy your race car, Rob. What a finish. Double greens from starter Kyle McKenzie, and we are underway. Daniel McKay races through corners one and two and leads the field down the back straightaway in the 13M machine, side by side and all kinds of chaos behind him. Out in front of the field still Daniel McKay, but here comes Kyle Wirt. He knows this to the inside off of corner number two and caution waving as Sean Iftati turned around in turn number three. Still three wide for that second and third positions. Sean Iftati rejoining the field there in corner number four. Jason Tolton a little out of shape there. Almost had that car pointed towards the outside wall in turn number four, but gathered it back in. Gonna cost him a whole bunch of spots as he drops like a stone outside the top 10. Now I'm a little bit out of the loop. Where did this Kyle Work car come from? Whose car was that? I am personally not too sure. I, he showed up in a black and green car here at the start of the night in uh, Somebody is missing a sneaker. Side by side into turn number three, Gillingham Hill, staying a little bit closer to the action than she had been. She'll work the extreme bottom and look at Fabio Oliveri in the 16, starting to flex some muscle. That was almost too close to call at the start finish line. That's why we use the transponder system. Kyle Wirt has it at the line and now pulling away just a little bit off of corner number two, half a car length. They reach the middle of the back shoot. It'll be five laps to go this time as we've got one around in turn number two. I believe that's Matt Newell. White flag waving for Kyle Wirt in the number 19 machine, looking to pick up his first win of the season as he works ahead of Nick Massey with a big advantage now off of corner number two. And Tristan De Silva and Jillian Hills might still have a shot at this runner-up spot. Yeah, look at Jillian Hills power her way down to three and four. Kyle Work gonna come out of turn four and take the checkered flag. The battle for second rages to the line three wide. It'll be Mazzy. And then Jillian Hills, Tristan De Silva. 